Not too long ago, I made a video where I was going through the Portswigger Web Security Academy labs and I finished the last couple labs that I needed in order to get my profile up to apprentice level. But there's actually two more levels that you can achieve, practitioner and expert. There are a lot of labs you have to solve to get there and obviously they get more and more difficult the farther up the ladder you go. But I thought I would start the journey towards practitioner and I've already actually solved a few of the practitioner labs just as I've been learning different topics. But for this video, I thought I would solve a lab on a topic that I haven't really talked about on this channel much before, and I don't really think I see many people talking about it, period. And that is WebSockets. So for this video, I will be solving the Crosslight WebSocket Hijacking Lab under the Portswigger Web Security Academy. And like usual, I'm going to access the lab in another tab, and I'm going to launch Burp Suite. And once that lab loads in another tab, I'm going to copy that URL, and I'm going to paste it into the browser inside Burp Suite and launch it there. And now I'm getting that web traffic in my Burp Suite HTTP history. And just to get an idea of what our goal is here, it says that this online shop has a live chat feature implemented using WebSockets. To solve the lab, use the exploit server to host an HTML JavaScript payload that uses a cross-site WebSocket hijacking attack to exfiltrate the victim's chat history. Then use this to gain access to their account. So this is something you see in a lot of websites where there will be like a contact form or like a help option where you can open up a live chat where IT support or something will be able to give you feedback and help you out if you're seeing an issue. And these kind of live chat features usually use WebSockets to communicate. And a lot of people that use Burp Suite may not have realized that if you look under proxy, you see you have the HTTP history tab, which is where you can see all these HTTP requests. But right next to that, you also have a WebSocket history tab where you can view the WebSocket traffic as well. So we don't even really need any sort of new special tool or anything in order to intercept that WebSocket traffic. Everything that we need is going to be right there built into Burp Suite already. And we can see right here in the top right corner, we have this button that says live chat. So we can go to that. And now we see that we have this live chat window and we are connected and we're chatting with someone named Hal Pline. And if we want to send a message, this is a test and send. And if we look over in our WebSockets history in Burp Suite, we see that we sent this message to the server. And there is our message that says this is a test. And here's the request that shows that content of the message that Hal Plan sent back to us. And if we just refresh this page, we see that there was a ready message that was sent from us to the server. And in response to that message, we get every message that was sent in the chat prior to that. Because this live chat function actually remembers our chat history and it responds with that full chat history whenever we refresh this page. And if we look back in our HTTP history tab, we can see that there's this git request to a slash chat URL endpoint. And there's a good chance that this request is actually like that handshake that is connecting to that WebSocket. And if we just refresh this page one more time just to see what that workflow looks like, we see that it is kind of creating that connection to the WebSocket. And you'll also notice that in the request, there's no CSERF token. If you don't know what a CSERF token is, you can read all about it in the section of the Web Security Academy covering cross-site request forgery. But basically, it's just a unique token that is sent in the request that protects you from cross-site request forgery. And since cross-site request forgery is a fairly common attack against WebSockets, it's very important to have a CSERF token or some other defense in place to prevent those kind of attacks on anything using WebSockets. So since this request does not have any CSERF token in place, we're going to craft a cross-site request forgery attack using this request. So to do this, I'm going to right-click and copy the URL. And conveniently for this lab, the Web Security Academy has actually provided a exploit server for us to use. So I'm just going to open that in another tab. If this was a different scenario where you didn't have access to this lab and you were doing something on a pen test or something, you could do this with like a third-party server like an AWS or something, or you could spin up a self-hosted server on your own machine using like Python, or you could also probably use the Burp Suite Collaborator tool to do this. But since we have access to this exploit server in this lab, we might as well use it. So now I have this little script in my exploit server, and this is just a very basic little skeleton of a cross-site WebSocket hijacking attack. You can just Google it if you want. You can find all kinds of websites and databases that have little skeletons of basic payloads for different sort of common attacks. 
I'm pretty sure the Port Swigger Web Security Academy actually has a bunch of these types of payloads throughout their different learning resources on their website too. But the two things that I need to change is I need to change the WebSocket URL, which I'm going to get from that URL on this request that we just looked at a minute ago. And I do need to make sure that that is a WSS instead of an HTTPS because we are making a WebSocket connection and not an HTTP connection. And the next thing I need is the exploit server URL. So I can just scroll up and get that right here. And there are a few ways you can go about actually getting that data that you want on the return. I'm going to actually get it to return that information in the URL so I can see it in the access logs of our exploit server. So I'm just going to put a message parameter at the end of that URL. And I'm just going to add the event.data at the end of that URL. So whenever they access that URL, it's actually going to return whatever the contents of that message is. And it's going to put it in the URL. So I'm going to be able to see it just from the access logs. And I don't even actually have to view the actual body of that message. Again, there are a few different ways you can do this. You could do this where you were actually like doing some sort of encoding or something to make it easier to work with. But this is just like sort of a small lab, so I'm kind of doing it in a quick and dirty way. But now I'm going to deliver this exploit to the victim, and I'm just going to give it a few seconds for the victim to actually access the URL, and then I'm going to check the access logs and see what they did. So now we just click this access log button, and if we scroll down to the bottom, we see all these get requests to our exploit server. And here we see the contents of those messages that were returned. Again, we did it in a pretty sort of quick and dirty way and didn't do any sort of encoding or anything. So it's kind of hard to read. But one way we can do this is just copy these lines right here. I'm going to go back to Burp Suite and I'm going to go to Decoder. And then I'm going to decode as URL. And that still doesn't make it perfect because I still have a bunch of this noise from like headers and things that get in the way. But at the very least, that takes away all those like percent %22s and all that other encoding that was making it kind of hard to read. And right here in this section, we can read the logs of their chat history. And the user Hal Pline says, hello, how can I help you? Then this other user says, I forgot my password. Hal Pline says, no problem, Carlos. It's... And here is the password that Hal Pline just gave to Carlos. And if we go back to the lab and go to my account, we can log in with the username Carlos and that password that we just found from those chat logs. Click log in. And we just access Carlos's account by stealing his password from his chat logs using a cross-site WebSocket hijacking attack. And with that, we just solved the lab. So that was a practitioner level lab under the WebSocket section. So you can probably tell that the difficulty level is going up a little bit. It's involving a little bit more complication of using the exploit server and having to craft payloads and things like that. So it's a little bit more involved than those labs that we did in the apprentice section. But I hope you were able to learn something. Again, this is a topic that I feel like I haven't really talked about at all on this channel, and I don't really see many people talking about it at all. But if you're doing pen testing or bug bounty hunting or anything like that, those WebSocket things are something that you should still be paying attention to. A lot of websites have those like live chat features and lots of other things that use those WebSockets. And if you're using Burp Suite, you already have the tools available to you and you should be taking a look at that as well. That's going to be it for this video though. I hope you enjoyed it and got something out of it and I hope I'll see you in the next one.